Good morning, dear friends. What a joy for us to face another day. And it is a privilege because we are not afraid. It is the Lord who gave us this day. And the Lord has promised His presence. He has not promised that it is going to be trouble-free and you will not have any problems. No, we may face all that, but the promise of His presence with us gives us the courage and strength to go on. And so, as we meditate on, uh, on this passage found in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 8, verses 5 to 13, I pray the Holy Spirit will move upon our hearts and anoint our hearing and anoint me to convey this message as it should be conveyed. And uh, take heart, my friends, the Lord has a plan and purpose for your life. And so let me read uh, this passage, the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 5, chapter 8, I'm sorry, chapter 8, verses 5 to 11. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home, paralyzed and in terrible suffering. The centurion replied, Lord, and Jesus said to him, I will go and heal him. And centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is what he said. But just say the word and my servant will be healed. What a faith. And so, from this passage, let me meditate with you. And I am sure you are going to be encouraged and, uh, uh, and blessed to face whatever situation you may have to face today, which you do not know, but our Lord knows. You know, Jesus often found faith and great faith in uh, unexpected people and also unexpected places. Now, and he commented for such people and their faith. And when Jesus saw such a faith, it was extraordinary or great faith. He was also uh, greatly disappointed. Why? Because he did not find faith where he maybe expected among his own people and even among his own disciples. He could not find even ordinary faith. And that is why Jesus Christ had to tell about his disciples when he talked to them, O oh, ye of little faith. And that was great disappointment. And uh, the passage before us for today's meditation tells us about a Roman centurion who was a heathen, yet shown great faith in Jesus Christ. His faith has surpassed the faith of uh, the Jews because his faith was combined with a loving concern for someone else with great trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. It was as if he began to feel the pain of one of his servants who was paralyzed and who was very, very sick. And for his sake and on his behalf, he, was, he sent this message to Jesus to come and heal him. And there are two, three things I want to mention from this passage concerning this man, the centurion. First of all, notice his recognition of his own authority. He said, I am a man under authority. In other words, I, have, I, I am a man with soldiers under me. And uh, that means if I tell one to go uh, uh, to so and so place and he goes. And to another he says come and go and do this, he goes and does it. That is his authority. He was a military man, an army man. And um, 
As the second thing I want you to notice here is he recognized his authority was limited. And now that is that is uh, 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 that is an amazing uh, credit to him that he recognized his limitation. And uh, he said, I am a man under authority. That's what he said. And thirdly, he recognized his unworthiness in the presence of the worthiness of this centurion. Our Lord Jesus Christ, he is under nobody. And so he sent this message to him. When he agreed, Jesus agreed to go and heal his servant, he sent back this message. I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. In other words, you are saying, I have no right to ask you. And I have nothing to say, even if you do not come. I cannot demand of you. And let us look at two scriptures in order to get a glimpse of the right attitude that we should have when we want to approach Jesus Christ for any favor or any blessing. The first is found in the book of James. Book of James, chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. And it says, Submit yourself then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. That is what. And then in verse 6 he says, but he gives us more grace. That is why scripture says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And so this passage says, when you come to Jesus Christ, you have no, uh, you cannot come to him on your own credit. You have no credit. And uh, you cannot approach him because I deserve it. You don't deserve it. Another scripture passage is found in uh, Peter. First Peter chapter, uh, chapter 5, verse 6. Chapter 5, verse 6 says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. And that is one thing about our God. Anyone who comes to him with that kind of humility and submitting himself to the Lordship of Jesus, Jesus himself will stretch out his hand and lift you up. And my friends, let us not behave as if we are the master and Jesus is like our servant. It is never that way. And so, always remember the right attitude to carry. And in the process, he recognized the authority of Jesus Christ. And his authority was unlimited. The centurion recognized the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ was unlimited. Because he is not under anyone else's authority. He is the highest authority. And uh, his authority was unlimited. And the centurion recognized the worthiness of Jesus. And before his worthiness, the centurion's own worthiness is nothing. And uh, 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 Jesus could command the sea and the storm and the wind and the waves uh, and they all obey him. This chapter in Matthew is a revelation of Jesus' authority over leprosy and over all kinds of sicknesses and diseases and over storms and over demons and uh, over the spirit of this world. 
We know he has authority over nature and death and over the devil himself. My friends, remember with whom we are dealing. He is the master of the waves and to the seas and to the storms. He is Lord over all. And let us come to him with that recognition that there is no one above Jesus or over Jesus. He is the highest authority. Lastly, one important aspect of his faith. The centurion was willing to take Jesus at his word. Now remember that. That is what real faith and great faith is. So many people came to Jesus. They all wanted to lay his hand on them or allow them to touch his, even his garment and or expected him to command and rebuke and all these sort of things they come. No, but not this man. He came knowing that one word from the lips of Jesus Christ is enough. Hallelujah. What a faith. He took Jesus at his word. And that is a, a, a great definition of faith. What is faith? Faith is G taking Jesus at his word. Remember this, my friends. And uh, the centurion was willing to take Jesus at his word. This is true faith. And there are three levels of faith. Number one, little faith, which we see in disciples. And many of the Jews did not have any faith in Jesus. And then number two, great faith, which he found among the heathens and among the simple people. And uh, uh, number three, perfect faith. Now, which level are you? I don't have a time in this meditation to explain what perfect faith is and great faith is. Some other time. But these are the three levels of faith. Jesus always had a problem with his disciples, little faith. He always found great faith among the heathen who did not know, who did, who, who did not belong to the uh, God's people. And uh, the Jews had either no faith or had little faith. That is the problem. And let it not be a problem with you who are listening to this meditation this morning. And I pray that you will follow the path that this centurion have taken. And Jesus commanded at a distance, from a distance, and that young man was healed by the word of God. And Jesus told him, you go, your servant is healed. And he took Jesus' word. And he took Jesus at his word. And he found, just as Jesus told, your servant is healed. My friends, there is an attitude problem with many of us when we come to Jesus. That is why we don't seem to get answers. We think we are worthy. We think we deserve God's favor. No, my friends, we don't deserve anything from him. You know, God opposes the, the proud. And let us come with that humility and take Jesus at his word and trust him. And with that humility will become a pathway for the blessings and grace of God to flow into you. May the Lord bless you as you put your faith into practice. Amen. I pray that the Spirit of God will move upon your heart and enlighten you and continue to be enlightened uh, in the light of this meditation. God's blessing be upon you. Amen.